They'll be calling you a radical. I've been wanting to do this video for years, for years. This is the infamous spot right here where John Lennon was killed that horrible, horrible, faithful day. I'm here with the baby wolf who chewed his way out of the cage. Eric Oppenheimer, New Yorker. You know, we're here for the Fukushima, you know, the controlled march, but we're going to, you know, we, we have to show up. You know, we don't like the control, but we're just going to kind of talk about why we think as anti-nuclear activists, yeah. as social equality activists, we failed. And we failed. And we, we admit that we failed. I, I, I know we failed. We've tried. We're just going to talk about what why we think systemically as a culture, as a people, we can accomplish nothing as artists, as whatever I guess we are. You know, this happened long before the baby wolf was <laughs> chewed his way out of his cage. But Eric and I remember it very, very well. My daughter was conceived that night, and you gotta realize he said I was more famous than God. He was. He never said I'm more important than God, and I imagine he was a powerful, powerful cultural figure. Very, very, and he moved society. And I believe the culture flipped. Nominal wages increased from 1945 to 1979 every single year in this country, the great progressive movement. From the time he killed, nominal wages have decreased every single year. You occupiers, pay attention. Tariffs, art moves culture, music moves culture, art is nothing but communication, and then you have to have representation of the idea, and the idea has to be representative of, you, you have to make a thing. So you get the idea, you make the thing, you move culture through music, through art. Boy, did John Lennon know that. And uh, the music died. Go ahead, Eric. You know, whatever you want to say. Eric, here's your words. I'm very shy. I'm not sure what to say. Well, what about Fukushima? You know, what's your take on Fukushima? What's my short say? Yeah. I, I've been working on it a long time. I'm not, I, I know you have. This. Fuck Al Gore. Yeah, that phony fraud, fucking rape artist. You know, these co-op fuckers. You know, we'll come in our their controlled march that they got, and they're going to freaking control us like a bunch of goats off the top, which they have. But that doesn't mean we still don't show up, and we still don't freaking do what we do, because we have our YouTube cameras. You know, and you come from a family of incredible, incredible artists, you know, and... You were telling me earlier today that your dad had a video camera, the incredible artist that he was. He had one of the first video cameras with his buddy Beto Conchi. It was a big giant thing with a big old corded lens. And they made their first videos. You know, I didn't know who you were when we did our walk in front of the physical graffiti and it was I love that piece. And I didn't know who you were. You showed up to the shirtwaist gig and we did that because Luann, the designer who I grew up with, had just hung herself. Her and I grew up out on the, I knew her when we were young, and so-called Mick Jaggers, but Mick Jagger had done that video in there. That's why I wanted to do it. You know, I've always wanted to do the physical graffiti, and the physical graffiti artists evolved from Warhol. They all evolved from Warhol, and I've always wanted to do it because culturally and artistically, and then you tell me who you were, and as soon as you told me later that night having a beer, I'm like, oh my God, you look just like him. And I've always, I was so turned on by your father's upside down church as a boy. It's still got to be one of my favorite pieces of art, and boy, I think it's more representative now, but again, the idea, but you have to have physical representation of the idea, which, what's easier to do a physical representation of the idea than a YouTube camera? You know, so people underlies this genre, and so you have the idea, then you have to make a physical representation to represent the idea. The, I always say the painting of the soup can, but then you have to paint the soup can. You know, it's not, it's the idea to paint the soup can, but then you have to paint the soup can, but then you have to paint the fucking soup can. So that's a YouTube video, you know, and like you said, I didn't know your father experimented with the camera. I find that very exciting. But, you know, there's there was a lot of people experimenting in the early 80s and whatnot, and of course Warhol's movies. But I don't think anybody ever moved culture in America like John Lennon. And, you know, when John Lennon was killed, think about Yoko. They were recording right up the street here. You ever listen to those recordings? They're beyond creepy. She was beyond creepy. She's still beyond creepy. She's Japanese Shogun elitist. So metaphorically, Fukushima means a lot. People don't get it. Come on over here. Stand right here. And this is the baby wolf, Kevin. The only person ever bought one of my shirts. He's the only <laughs> other one that ever bought one of those. I made those on day three. Iodine, cesium, plutonium. I made them on Zazzle. Here's his, here's here's his, his Fukushima elephant. 
it's your generation that we've done this to. What do you think? I feel like my generation has, I mean, my generation's not doing anything. I'm the only person from my generation here, so this shows how much they honestly care. I mean, this is pretty much the Trail of Tears 2014. We're genociding ourselves, we're polluting our earth, and we're destroying pretty much our life. Well, do you think it's because you feel like you, you are hopeless and you don't have a chance? No, I feel like people are content with polluting themselves. They're content with smoking cigarettes. They're content with sitting in their house playing video games. And they're content with just being pretty much baby fed their meals. They're not going out and working for anything. And they're not accomplishing anything. So. so it's Russell Means, what he said. I always quote Russell Means, who died in 2012, by the way. And he was brilliant. He, the famous Native American activist. Lakota Sioux and he says by the way I love the white buffalo I love you guys you know that he said you take the baby wolf or you take a wild wolf you put it in the cage you capture it he will chew in on those bars it will not eat a spin in that cage till it's dead you take a baby wolf born into the cage he will live comfortably in that cage and that's you know I call you the baby wolf you even kind of look like me when I was your age and I uh, you know and it's hard for the baby wolves to get that concept I think and he said the same thing and then I liked his other line, he would say, the white Anglo-Saxon came to this land always looking to find a way to get to heaven. Before they got here, he says, we had heaven. We had no jails, we had no locks, we had no disease, and, you John know. Trudeau. Yeah. So, do you, what do you think it's gonna take? I mean, you guys, we gave you an 18 trillion dollar, got rid of tariffs, took all your jobs, serving coffee, no wages, you guys make chump change, and we poisoned your earth, so we're just a bunch of spoiled rotten baby, and we're gonna say, here, bye, see it, you fix it, bye, fuck you. It's up to the individual, pretty much. If you wanna make a change, you gotta do it yourself. I mean, that's pretty much how it goes. Because my generation, we really have to do something, or else the earth is completely toasted. Sweet are the uses of adversity. Yeah, I mean, but my generation, like I said, they're happy with it, they're not really doing anything, they don't care about Fukushima. I mean, they're happy with the wars going on. They're not standing out against any of that. Yeah. So really, they're just evil murderers. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what I think too. Me, my they're happy. They're my happy. daughter, my youngest is your age. Her and I argue like cats and dogs on this issue. But I want people to understand when John Lennon was killed on a Monday night during Monday Night Football, Howard Cosell comes on. And he's broke down, just crying. This is how loved this guy was, and he was. Do not kid yourself. The greatest socialist in the world. Oh yes. Do not yourself he was he, he was an amazing person now I always go back to Julian he says I didn't know whether I wanted to jump up and down or cry when my dad died because there was a hard edge to him and he, he abandoned his child he come from the name but you know on that whole gig with Yoko I mean I mean he's tough to understand but he moved culture oh did he move culture and anybody that doesn't believe that is a fool and the next Sunday Every music station in the world, I know in the United States, and I believe it's true in Europe, whether they played country and western, and jazz, R&B, whatever at the time, so there was a moment of silence and every single radio station in America played Imagine, and it was very emotional. Every NFL stadium, every baseball stadium, everything, and he was a... And I believe when he died, and I can really dive into this, is why, because I believe the music died. I believe the art died, I believe the culture died, and we did not defend tariffs, we did not defend usury laws, we did not enforce antitrust laws, because we didn't have the artistic leaders of the time, because the artist leads, the artist always leads. And somebody who's painting pictures and putting them on a wall, those are not artists, those are interior decorators for the oligarchs. So, he was an artist. He was an artist. You understand this, Eric, probably. I mean, the idea, right? The idea comes first. Absolutely. It's the most important thing. Yeah, and it has to be your fresh, original idea, and it has to re be recording history. Then you it have to actualize it. You yeah. want to have a discussion. You can't just be in your brain. You actualize it. You make some kind of object, a sketch, a poem, a song, a skirt, whatever you want to make. A travel a Fukushima shirt. shirt. Fukushima. An elephant. Right. Yeah, and so, you, know, you, you look at Warhol's cans and I always go back to them. You know, you go to the MoMA, they're the most, if you, you go in the MoMA, that's all anybody wants to see. They're powerful. Do not kid yourself. And they're, there's nothing dramatic about them. You know, they're the art critic. Everybody hated them, you know, but the art critic walked out one day and he says, I got it. 
It was, he says, Andy, why are you dripping? His original cans had drips on the bottom. A lot of people don't know that. He says, Andy, why are you dripping? Well, you got to drip. And he says, I don't like dripping. And he's like, good, because I don't fucking like dripping. And then he says, I walked out, and he says, I realized it wasn't the painting of the soup can. It was the idea to paint the soup can. But then I say, you got to paint the soup can. My metaphorical significance painting with tomato soup cuts across a lot. It's, it's ideas. And I'm not a big fan of what art looks like. I really don't give a damn what it looks like. I mean, of course, you want something that excites you. But I don't think that has much to do with how pretty it is or how neat it is. I mean, some of the great art, you know, your dad's church upside down on the sphere. I mean, that just significantly goes woo to me, you know? Oh, so it's Jernica. Oh, what a pain. And he was an activist, and it was in the time. I think that art, personally, is recording history. That's what I believe. I always quote Michelangelo. <laughs> Art is communication, and that's all it ever was, and the recording of history, and, you know, what's he, you know, I had an argument with him, well, not an argument, a great discussion with a really great artist last night, and I says, YouTube, what a powerful genre, can you imagine those guys with a YouTube camera, like you said, your dad was in that big machine, can you imagine you had a YouTube camera? Ho, 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 Andy, why are you making these films? A lot easier than painting. I think that's one of the very few things that he didn't say in sarcasm. <laughs> painting's hard work, too. Of course, traveling ain't easy, but... We'll be at the march tomorrow, and I want to say this to the occupiers, you're trying to reboot down there. You better be talking about tariffs, you're going to get nowhere, or they're just going to laugh at you. You can get mad and stomp your feet all you want. We have to have answers. We have answers at Fukushima. We have answers. You know? Shut down all the nuclear plants. There's no answer for the waste. Anybody's climate marching that's not talking about Fukushima, the elephant. Stored all over this country. They're ticking tie bombs, whip leaking, Fukushima ongoing for 1,289 days today. No answers, so. I think this is an important, hallowed spot. It's stopped here. Maybe it can pivot. Something will happen here that'll pivot it. Stand tuned and God bless you, imagine. We love you, man. We love your art. You know, I really love that guy. I got his book that he writes. His letters, and I've been reading them, it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it shows you what an intimate person he was. Stay in tune.